let us see about power bjt so these are power bjt's mounted on a heat sink so what is a power transistor basically it is a control device meaning that it can be turned on by a gate signal so this is a gate signal applying to the base of the circuit so the device gets turned on so if i remove this gate signal or i make it zero it gets turned off so it is a control device there are different types of power transistor uh, first one is the power bjt so this is a symbol of bjt next is the mosfet so mosfet you have drain source and gate and the third one is the igbt which has the features of both bjt and mosfet it means that um igbt has the input characteristics of a mosfet so it has gate terminal and output characteristics of a bjt so you have collector and emitter terminal of the bjt here so it is a combination of bjt plus mosfet that is igbt which is widely used and now it is uh, replacing the bjt in most of the applications what is a bipolar transistor the term bipolar indicates that the current flow in the device is due to the movement of both holes and electrons so we know the symbol of a transistor a uh, same um, transistor symbol is used for power bjt also so this is a npn transistor and this is a pnp transistor so this npn transistor is normally preferred because electrons have higher mobility and this helps in uh, high current applications so normally npn transistors is preferred Uh, signal transistors or the uh, small transistors which we have used in electronics uh, cannot be used for high power applications uh, the main uh, requirement for power transistors are in the off state it should be able to block high voltage and when it is in on state when it, it is conducting it should be able to carry high current so in order to meet these requirements we have to change the structure of the signal transistor so that it can be used for high power applications so the structure of power bjt this is the normal uh, bjt structure you see n p n transistor is here so now to change this structure you insert a n minus layer here so near the collector a n n minus layer is inserted so that the voltage blocking capability of the device will increase so this region is called drift region but you cannot increase this region beyond a limit because as you increase this region the on state resistance will increase which increases the power loss in the device so we cannot increase this uh, beyond a limit so this is the structure of um, power bjt you can see here this is the collector n plus region and n minus drift region then p is connected to base and n plus is connected to the emitter so what does this plus and minus indicate so this p indicates that it is moderately doped the doping level is 10 power 16 per centimeter cube if uh, the doping level is more than this level it is specified by a plus symbol and if the doping level is less than this one it is represented by a minus symbol so the in the structure of power bjt this is an additional region added to increase the 
voltage blocking capacity of the device. So let us see about the input characteristics. So what is input characteristics? You are drawing a graph between the input parameters. So you take this transistor, a NPN transistor. So this is base. So the base current and base emitter voltage are input parameters. And the graph drawn between the input parameters will give you the input characteristics. So this is basically a PN junction. The curve also resembles a diode curve. So curve is between um, base current and base emitter voltage. So this is the curve. So this is drawn for different collector emitter voltages. So we have a biasing voltage here. This minus this uh, drop will give you this voltage. So in case the, if this voltage is high, that is VC2 is greater than VC1, the base current requirement may decrease. So for example, for a particular base emitter voltage, your base current requirement is this one. In case this voltage is greater, you can you may need a lesser base current. So this is the input characteristics. So next is the output characteristics. So this is drawn between the output parameters. Output current versus output voltage. Uh, this is collector emitter voltage. So collector current, collector emitter voltage and you will get the characteristics. So if you see this characteristics, it is drawn for different base currents. So this is IB equal to 0, IB1, IB2, IB3. So it is drawn for different base currents. So this indicates that this device is a current control device, meaning that your input current is controlling the output current. So input base current is controlling the output current. So it is a current control device. Next, if you see here, base current is zero, meaning that there is no input for the transistor or no gate signal. So output should be zero. So this is said to be the transistor in off state or cutoff state. And uh, in this case, uh, the device can block a particular voltage or this is the maximum voltage a device can block. And sometimes this base current can be maintained negative to increase this voltage, but that is not usually recommended. So this is the cutoff region where the collector current is zero or the device is said to be in off state. The next region is the active region. This is the region where amplification takes place. So uh, it is used for um, used in amplification purpose. And if you see the uh, power loss here, uh, you multiply the voltage by current, uh, power loss in this active region will be very high. So normally in power electronics, this active region is not used. The next one is the saturation region. Actually in a signal transistor, you will get one saturation region, but in power BJT, you have two saturation region called quasi saturation and hot saturation. So why do you get this hot saturation is similar to the saturation region in a signal transistor. But what is this quasi saturation? It is due to the introduction of N minus layer. So in the structure, we have introduced one N minus drift region. So because of that, you are getting this region. 
so this is quasi saturation region so this hot saturation region the uh, the device is said to be a closed switch because in this region the base current does not have any control over the collector current and the device carries the maximum current so it is said to be a closed switch so quasi saturation is due to the introduction of n minus drift region and the total voltage drop is higher compared to the hot saturation region because of that resistivity in hot saturation region base current Uh, does not have any control over the output current or the collector current and this current is determined by the collector load and the vcc but the problem is the turn off time will be more in the hot saturation region so it cannot be very uh, used for very high frequency so let us see some important formula the forward current gained alpha maybe 0.95 to 0.1 and beta if you see uh, compared to signal transistor uh, beta will be low in case of a power bjt it will be 5 to 20 only and these are basic formulas so the dc current gain is usually smaller compared to that signal level transistor and therefore the base drive requirement is very high in this uh, power bjt that is a drawback here so the transistor has two modes of operation uh, it can be used as a amplifier or a switch so if you operate in active region it will act as a amplifier uh, whereas um, if you operate in the cut off mode or saturation mode it acts as a switch so switching operation is usually preferred in power electronic circuits so that power loss will be less because in switch off condition current will be less in switch on condition voltage will be less so power loss will be less so during turn on a power transistor will um, a change from cut off region to saturation region and during turn off process um, it moves from saturation region to cut off region let us see the switching characteristics first we will see about the turn on characteristics so the turn on uh, time comprises two components delay time and rise time so we will draw the graph for this one so first one is the base current so that is the input and what will be the collector current and the collector emitter voltage these two are output for input base current what is the output parameters so uh, given the base current high for a long time and then it is made zero so this will give you the turn on characteristics so as soon as you give the base current collector current will not increase immediately because uh, this is only a uh, leakage current and uh, the voltage will be a high value because it has not started conduction so this is represented as delay time so during this time the delay time Uh, the base emitter capacitance will be charged to 0.7 volts so once it has been charged after that the current starts to rise so that is called the rise time so current rises to its steady state value and the voltage drops to its on state voltage drop okay so this total time is called the on time so if you want to reduce the turn on time you can increase the base current but the problem is that as the base current increases turn off process may take time because you have to remove more charge carriers from the base so this will increase the turn off time next is the 
turn off characteristics so it has two components storage time and fault time so same characteristics if we see uh, after ib has become zero collector current stays high for some time and then drops to a leakage value so this period uh, during this period charge carriers will be removed from the base and after that the current uh, falls to the leakage value so this is the turn off characteristics so next is the safe operating area actually there are two safe operating areas that is uh, when it is forward biased what will be the um, limits and when it is reverse biased what will be the limits so this is forward safe operating area so this actually gives the operating limit for the uh, output parameters that is the collector current and the collector emitter voltage so if you see here uh, this ab bc and cd so this is the region now uh, if i want to operate um, at 100 volts 100 amps it is okay i can operate suppose i want to operate at a higher voltage means i have to reduce the current okay so that is given by this line bc because if i want to operate at a higher voltage say if this is 200 volts i cannot go and operate at the same 100 amps so if i do so here breakdown will occur it means that it gets heated and device may get damaged so that is given by this boundary so next if i want to still increase the voltage i have to reduce the current okay. so these uh, time uh, indicates the pulse width so this is for a continuous dc signal but if i use a pulse signal my uh, operating area will increase little bit because it will consider only the average dissipation because we are giving the pulse as a signal so it will be turned on for some time and turned off for uh, some time so if you find um, the average value it will come under this curve so limitations of power bjt the base drive requirement is high bjt has negative temperature coefficient meaning that as the temperature increases resistance will decrease so more current will flow which increases the temperature again uh, resistance decreases so after some time it will get uh, damaged so parallel operation is not possible and it has more um, switching loss is more and the turn off time is more so it is not suitable for very high frequency application so the points to remember here are it is a bipolar device minority carrier device unidirectional device current control device and uh, turned on by applying a base current and turned off by removing base current so it is a control device bjt has negative temperature coefficient and it suffers from secondary breakdown problem and the base drive circuit is complex So if you like the video, do subscribe to Read Electric Vehicle. Thank you.